Welcome. One of the most important things you will learn over the next few days of your orientation is that safety is an unwavering value here at our company. Nothing you ever do here is worth getting injured. We take safety and protection of the environment very seriously. This is only possible with your help and cooperation to make each and every day a safe day. The safety of all our employees, visitors, contractors, customers, and the general public, including our neighbors and our environment, depends upon your cooperation and the active participation of all our employees. An important thing to understand is, if that you ever have a question about your safety, identify a practice or condition that you feel is dangerous, please notify a manager or supervisor immediately. If you have a feeling that something is not quite right, it probably isn't. Never be afraid to ask for help or clarification, especially during your first few weeks on the job. The purpose of this orientation process is to provide you important information regarding our safety culture, procedures, policies, and requirements. Certainly not all of your environmental health and safety or EHS training will occur today. In fact, training will continue to be an important part of your job throughout your career here. Your supervisor will be conducting additional training depending on your assignment. We all have an opportunity to contribute to improving our safety culture. When thinking about safety, ask yourself, am I taking care of myself and my coworkers? Am I leading by example when it comes to safe behaviors? Am I upholding our company's commitment to safety? In addition to these questions, there are several other things to consider while working safely. There are three main safety rules you should always remember. Always take responsibility for your personal safety. Never perform any task unless you have been trained and authorized. Always follow job procedures and company rules. There will be rules and safety procedures specific to operations, but there are also general safety rules that apply to all employees. Your manager or supervisor will review these rules with you during your orientation, and you'll also be given a copy of them to take with you. Remember, these rules are not suggestions. They are requirements designed to protect you. It is a company requirement that every employee immediately reports an accident or injury, even if you think it is minor. An accident is any unplanned and unwanted event that causes injury to someone or damage to company property. Whether it's a serious situation or just a minor first aid injury, all must be reported to your manager or supervisor immediately. Near misses should also be reported whenever one is witnessed. A near miss can be thought of as an accident or injury that almost happened and might happen in the future unless we make changes to the facility or in the way we do things. In other words, events, if timing or location had been slightly different, an accident or injury would likely have occurred. The reason why reporting even minor incidents is important is to allow us the opportunity to properly investigate the underlying cause so that corrective action can be taken to reduce future risk to employees. What is a minor first aid case or even near miss today can result in a serious accident in the future. Prompt reporting of injuries is also important because we want to make sure proper medical care is provided to all our employees when necessary. In some cases, injuries may be more serious than they initially appear and failure to get the proper treatment may result in the injury getting worse or for complications to develop. An example would be a minor cut from metal that becomes infected or results in a serious illness such as tetanus if an inoculation was never received. Fact being, if accidents and injuries are not reported, we cannot take the necessary steps to investigate and then take action to prevent them from happening again. Our company takes this very seriously to the point where failure to report accidents and injuries can result in disciplinary action up to and including dismissal. As the result of an on site injury, a coworker may be exposed to bodily fluids such as blood. It is important that you are aware of the dangers when coming into contact with blood. Bloodborne pathogens are infectious microorganisms in human blood that can cause disease in humans. These pathogens include hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV. 
In addition to blood, you must consider any bodily fluid to be contaminated and capable of passing or spreading a dangerous pathogen to you. Only emergency response team members are certified to handle blood and other bodily fluids in any way, including cleanup. You should never attempt to render first aid to anyone. Instead, if you find yourself the closest to an injured coworker, it is a best practice for you to position yourself a safe distance away from the injured person so that you can engage in crowd control to help other untrained coworkers from coming in contact with contaminated blood or bodily fluids. In the case of fire, natural disaster, or extended power outage, our location has an emergency action plan. You should become knowledgeable of our site's specific plan. You should know and familiarize yourself with the location of fire extinguishers. Keep in mind that they can only be used on a fire that is in its incipient or beginning stage and when they are within 25 feet of the fire. You should also know where the fire alarms are located throughout the facility. Become familiar with your exit routes every day when in the facility and know the staging locations associated with each emergency condition. Know what you are to do and where to go for each emergency situation. The general manager or the most senior management representative on site is responsible to coordinate with local emergency response units such as fire departments during emergency situations and rescue operations. Coworkers are responsible for attending emergency evacuation training sessions following all instructions for emergency evacuation, reporting to your designated safe area as quickly as possible, and ensuring emergency exit aisles are never blocked. The senior management representative is responsible for providing the all clear and informing everyone when it is safe to return inside the facility. This can only occur as a result from guidance from the expert organization handling the emergency. As a co-worker, always make yourself familiar with who are your emergency responders. Unlike fires and hazardous material spills inside a building, there may be times when it is safer to remain inside and not evacuate the building. Using a strategy commonly referred to as shelter-in-place, employees may be directed to stay indoors or report to a certain area of the building, such as a storm shelter. Examples where shelter-in-place may apply include severe weather, such as during a tornado warning, if there is a hazardous material release in the immediate neighborhood, or there is some type of criminal threat or civil unrest outside. Your supervisors and management team are trained to follow the action plan and will provide direction on what you should do. You should know where the emergency shelters are and report to them immediately when directed. Back strains and sprains are a common cause of injury to workers throughout our industry. The best thing you can do is not lift at all by using material handling aids like pallet jacks, forklifts, hoists, lift tables, etc. when they are available. Plan your lift and make sure you have safe and unobstructed access to the material. Look where you will be going after the lift to ensure the path is clear and have a good understanding of what you will be lifting. Know the approximate weight, whether there are proper handholds, could weight shift, etc. Lift in your power zone, knuckle to shoulder height, the closer the better, do not overreach or extend. Get assistance if the item to be handled is bulky, awkward, or is likely to exceed the safe lifting limits of one person. If lifting with more than one person, make sure you coordinate and communicate with your fellow worker. Another lifting device that may become available to you is a forklift. While requiring special training, they are very powerful and an effective means of accomplishing a lift that is usually used with heavy industrial level loads and lifts. We have all been taught that the pedestrian always has the right of way, but in a warehouse or a production area, safety is a shared responsibility. What do we mean when we say this? We mean the forklift operator has a responsibility not to strike you as the pedestrian and you, the pedestrian, have the responsibility to not get hit by a forklift. So how is this accomplished? You begin by using the pedestrian walk lanes that are painted throughout the production area. They intend to provide you, the pedestrian, with a safe zone for you to walk throughout the entire production area. 
Even when you, the pedestrian, are walking within the safe zone, you can be injured and must therefore always be vigilant about how you move from point A to point B throughout the facility. One way to do this is to always extend professional courtesy to a forklift operator by giving him or her the right of way. As one approaches you, briefly stop, obtain eye-to-eye contact with the operator as you await guidance from him or her. This guidance will be provided to you through the use of hand and arm signals. If an operator were to extend his or her hand outward toward you with their palm extended, that would indicate that you should stop and allow the forklift operator to pass and exit your area of travel. The forklift operator may also engage a wavy motion from left to right, which would indicate to you that you should continue your path of travel because he or she is yielding the complete right of way to you. PPE stands for Personal Protective Equipment. As it relates to PPE, there's an old saying that goes, right tool, right job. That is no less true here. An example of this is the variety of personal protective equipment that may be required to be used throughout our facility. While there is no one glove for all jobs, you must learn, know, and decide which type of hand protection is best for the job you are performing. Along with protecting your hands, you must also always consider the need to protect your eyes and head through the use of hard hats, safety glasses, safety goggles, and face shields. Hard hats come rated in a way that is best for a great variety of jobs. Other examples of PPE include earplugs for hearing protection and steel toe shoes for foot protection. Each site and positions requiring PPE will be clearly instructed to you. Jewelry may not be permitted while in the production environment of our location. Refer to our site's specific instructions for the cell phone policy. PPE is considered the last line of defense against workplace hazards. The first line of defense is you. And remember, all co-workers, office workers, and guests must abide by our facility's PPE requirements. Because the potential is so great for injury while working with or around machinery, the need for very specialized machine guarding is necessary. These guards come in many shapes, sizes, and styles. They range from a simple cord all the way to a specialized plexiglass guard. This particular type of guard will allow the coworker to monitor the operation of the machine part being guarded without having to place themselves at risk or injury. You must never attempt to bypass a machine guard in any way. You should also check all equipment you will be working with at the beginning of each shift to ensure all required guards are in place. Never attempt to operate any machinery that has any guards missing, and in addition, always be on the lookout for any guards that may need to be added. Any machine part, function, or process which may result in injury must be safeguarded. Emergency stop devices, or e-stops, provide workers a means of stopping machinery during an emergency by pushing a button or pulling a rope in order to prevent injury to co-workers or material loss. There are specific times when you should use an e-stop, such as in case of an emergency, such as someone falling down near a machine or getting a part of their body stuck in a part of the machine. If you drop something and you want to prevent it from causing a problem within the machine. When the material runs out. E-stops may also be activated when a fire alarm goes off to quickly turn off a machine. It is important to always familiarize yourself with where the e-stop device is on each machine you work on before you begin working. Lotto. What is it? It means lockout, tag out, and its intention is to prevent the unexpected energizing, startup, or movement of any machine or part of a machine, or release of stored energy within a piece of equipment. These energy types include electrical, mechanical, hydraulic, pneumatic, chemical, thermal, or other energies. Lotto is not the same as an e-stop and should not be used for the same purposes. There are many different types of machinery ranging from extrusion lines to printing presses. It is important to understand the different sources of energy for each machine and the safety risks involved of not properly locking out a machine. 
According to the OSHA standard, lockout tagout should be used whenever an employee is required to place any part of their body either in or on a piece of equipment while working on the machine. This can be where the material is being processed, point of operation, or where an associated danger zone exists during a machine operating cycle. Energized means connected to an energy source or containing residual or stored energy. How does Lotto relate to our coworkers? First, it breaks us down into two groups, the authorized employee who can administer a lockout tagout device to equipment. Only trained coworkers in specific jobs can perform lockout tagout. Second is the affected employee, who is the coworker whose job performance is directly affected by the use of a lotto device on the equipment they are working with. We use both a procedure for lockout tagout with general guidelines and a machine specific lockout tagout policy. This will provide you with all the guidance you need to perform lockout tagout when necessary and will ensure that you operate well within the OSHA standard on lockout tagout. Depending on your work duties, you may be required to handle hazardous materials. Coworkers have a right to know about the chemicals and chemical hazards they work with and are around. All chemicals and liquids must be properly labeled when on the production floor. You can obtain this information from both the containers they are in and the safety data sheets or SDSs. Our safety representative will show you how to locate the SDSs. Both must contain the following information. Identity of the chemical, name and address of manufacturer, PPE requirements, physical and health hazard warnings. Since SDSs are OSHA regulated, they are standardized. This means the same information will always be found in the same section of every SDS. In addition, all chemical labels incorporate the use of GHS, which uses pictures as well as words to explain a chemical agent's hazards. Once you have had the opportunity to work with one SDS, you can count on the same information being located in the same section of every SDS. We consider you to be working at heights when you're working at a height of six feet or greater, at which time fall protection, also known as a fall arrest system, must be in place and utilized. Whenever you know you will be working at heights, you must always ensure that you complete an elevated work permit correctly. For the safety of our employees, we have minimized the need for working at heights. Before you are required to work at heights, you should carefully inspect all working at heights equipment, such as making sure the ladder you will be using has a current inspection tag and all the straps of your fall arrest system are in good condition with no rips or frays anywhere. Always remain mindful when working at heights that you must never use the top rung of any ladder as a step and never attempt to modify ladders in any way. Thank you for joining us for this important discussion about safety. Please be aware that there will be more specific rules and training that will be provided to you based on your job. Refer to your coworker handbook or cite human resources for other important policies, such as our site's workplace violence policy, smoking policy, parking lot safety rules, and cell phone policy. And remember, safety begins with you.